The bug that bit was more from the standpoint that while I was working at a paper mill, I was doing pen and ink drawings and I was going to the local printer, making prints and selling prints. I latched on to Harrisburg Area Community College. I enrolled in their two-year degree program, which is art and industry. And at that time, there was no digital. It was all handwork. A lot of mine came by way of ink work along with an X-Acto blade. It kind of got me through that to the point that it was occupational. I continued with graphic design career, uh, becoming a, a creative services manager, education manager, so on and so forth. And I entered a show at the Art Association in 2009. That's the first show I'd done anything with fine art. I, I was able to get uh, first place in, in one of the categories. For me to get away from the aspect that art equated to work, I had to get back to the hand applied stuff that I saw as being individual. My work is almost commercial in nature with the hard outline. I do like hearkening back to the hand applied aspects of it, whether it's putting down a line with brush or pen, pencil, anything like that. I avoid categories. At times, folks want to see things categorized, and I understand they may want to classify it as maybe lowbrow, pop surrealist in that capacity, or dark surrealism. I just don't think too much about that. This is one last year that I was fortunate enough to have accepted uh, National Liberty Museum in Philadelphia. Uh, they have their annual David Bowie exhibition. I just glommed on to a partial lyric in his song, Moon Age Daydream. That that would be perfect for something like this. He referenced the pink monkey bird. I don't know, I just just thought, it, you know, there's, there's a cool visual reference to take and run with. I'll sit down, office ballpoint pens or something like that. And a lot of times it's gotta be like bond copy paper. I'll, I'll create in that capacity to cre create a, a drawing, a rough drawing. I may even further copy it and refine it further. I like the viscosity of ink. I like things to be archival. It's not for the sake of posterity, it's more from the standpoint I figure I owe it to anybody that's gonna buy my work that's gonna be permanent. So I saw this place come for sale and I didn't really have any intent on, you know, establishing a business or a gallery. I'd already had a freelance publishing business for about 20 years, but I just saw something here that could be created with a historical perspective, but yet housing artwork, contemporary artwork in that capacity. The community here is so rich with artists. It usually doesn't get the exposure you know, I think it should, but that's just me. But I think in, in working with others, and you're working with others in a selfless capacity, you, you're not in, a, in, in, that, in that arena of competition. I, we were always in that aspect that we had another gallery open up on the same block, that'd be great. It's, it's just increasing the footprint of it being a destination. You know, there's people that may not want to go to a gallery because they feel the obligation that they have to buy something or that there's the instance of seeing it or going into a place with an obligation set forth somehow. And I look at a lot of this stuff and I just like people coming in, visiting, seeing my work and, you know, just, just having some exchange in that capacity. And you look at a lot of the, the, the community of artists that are out there producing work. Um, I think that's what's really helped invigorate me, especially with younger artists. And that's probably why I'll just keep doing what I do.
For more from Mosaic, please like and subscribe to the channel or check out another video. To help support this project, please visit witf.org mosaic.